Chapter 40 Attaining Prem, the Supreme Wealth Vijay pondered deeply, hearing about Brajlila, a greed has now awakened in my heart. Thus I will gradually attain the stage of complete success, Sampati Dash. He therefore concluded that he must know about the nature of this gradual development. Thinking thus, he approached Sri Guru Goswami and humbly inquired, Prabhu, I need to know the various stages that a bhakta undergoes, beginning from the stage of hearing to the stage of Sampati Dash, complete success. Goswami. Altogether, there are five stages. 1. Shravana Dasha, the stage of hearing. 2. Varna Dasha, the stage of acceptance. 3. Smarna Dasha, the stage of remembrance. 4. Bhavapana Dasha, the stage of spiritual ecstasy. And 5. Prem Sampati Dasha, the stage of attaining the highest success of Prem. Vijay, kindly explain Shravana Dasha. Goswami, when the jiva develops ruchi for hearing Krishna Lila Gata, it should be understood that his state of aversion has been removed. At that time, an intense hankering to hear Krishna Gata awakens in him, and he has to hear transcendental Krishna Gata from the lips of a bhakta who is much more advanced than he is. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 4.29.40, it is said, Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Madhu Brich Charita Pusa Shesha Sarita Parita Shravanti Taye Vibanti Avritrisho Nripa Gada Karnayas Tanna Sparshyanti Asana Trid Baya Shoka Moha Translation in assemblies of saintly people, unlimited rivers of pure nectar emanate from the mouths of great souls in the form of descriptions of the transcendental character, pastimes, and qualities of Sri Krishna. Those who are never satiated when they drink these nectarian glories through their ears with rapt attention can never be subjected to hunger, thirst, fear, grief, delusion, and other anartas. Vijay. Those who are averse, Bahir Mukdasha, also occasionally hear Krishna Gata. What kind of shravan is that? Goswami. There is a vast difference between the shravan of Krishna Gata in the state of aversion, Bahir Mukdash, and shravan in the state of being favorably disposed, Antar Mukdash. The shravan of those who are Bahiyamuk takes place by chance and not because of their Shraddha. Such Shravan gives rise to spiritual fortune that leads towards Bhakti, Bhakti Unmuk Sukriti, and when this has accumulated over many lifetimes, it gives rise to transcendental Shraddha. At the stage that this transcendental Shraddha is awakened in the heart, Shravanam of Krishna Kata from the lips of saintly personalities is called Shravana Dasha. There are two types of Shravana Dasha. The first is unmethodical or irregular hearing, Krama Hina Shravana Dasha. And the second is hearing methodically in a regular order, Krama Shuddha Shravana Dasha. Vijay. What is Krama Hina Shravana Dasha? Irregular hearing. Goswami. Krama Hina Shravana Dasha is hearing about Krishna Lila in an irregular or unmethodical manner. Hearing Krishna Lila with irresolute intelligence results in this sort of unmethodical Shravana, because such hearing does not enable one to realize the relationship between the various Lilas, and thus Rasa does not awaken in his heart. Vijay, please explain. Kram Shuddha Shravana Dasha, Systematic Hearing Goswami Rasa only awakens in one's heart when Krishna Lila is heard methodically or in a regular order with resolute intelligence. When one hears the Astakalya Nitya Lila, 
the eternal eightfold pastimes, separately from the Naimitika Leelas, occasional Leelas such as Krishna's divine birth and so on. Then his Shravan is Kram Shuddha. Only this Kram Shuddha Shravan is desirable on the path of Bhajan. If one hears Krishna Leela in the Kram Shuddha manner, the sweetness and charm of the Leela is gradually conceived, and the inclination to perform Raganuga Bhajan appears in the heart of the listener. At that time he thinks within himself, Oh, Subal has such a wonderful Sakya Bhav for Krishna. I will also render loving savour to Krishna like him in Sakya Ras. This type of strong affinity is called lobe, greed. The performance of Krishna Bhajan with such lobe, following the sweet Bhavs of the Brajabhasis, is called Raganuga Bhakti. I have given the example of Sakyaras, but this type of Raganuga Bhakti is also performed in all the four Rasas, beginning with Dasya. By the grace of my Praneshwari Sri Nimananda, you have a natural disposition for Sringara Ras. Because you have heard about the Braja Gopis' exceptional bhavs and seva attitude towards Krishna, the greed to render Prema Mai seva to Krishna like them has appeared in your heart, and that very greed has bestowed upon you the path to obtain such aprakat seva. In reality, the only shravana dasha of this process is the confidential conversation between guru and disciple. Vijay, when is one's shravana dasha considered completed? Goswami, one's shravana dasha is completed when one realizes the eternality of Krishna Lila. Since Krishna Lila is supremely pure and transcendental, it completely captivates the mind and heart. One is then afflicted with acute impatience to enter into it and participate in it. Sri Gurudev describes to the Shishya the Ekadash Bhavs that I mentioned previously. Shravana Dasha should only be considered completed or perfected when the disciple's disposition of mind is imbued with the loveliness of the Leela. At that time, the disciple is afflicted with intense eagerness and attains Varna Dasha, the stage of acceptance. Vijay, Prabhu, please tell me about Varna Dasha. Goswami, when the spontaneous attachment of the heart is bound in the Leela by the shackles of the Ekadav's bhavs that I mentioned previously, the disciple becomes overwhelmed and falls at Gurudev's lotus feet, weeping constantly. At that time, Gurudev becomes manifest in the form of a Saki, and the disciple as her attendant. The essential characteristic of the Brajagopis is that they are extremely eager to render loving service to Sri Krishna. Gurudev is a Braja Lalana who has reached the perfected stage of his seva. At that time, the disciple humbly prays to Sri Gurudev with the following heartfelt sentiments Tvam natva yachate dritva trinam dantya ayam jana sva dashyamrita sekana jiva yamum sudukritam namunch chek charanayatam api dustam daya maya. Ato radalike hana muchchayanam naiva tadrisham premam boja marandakya stavaraj. 11. 3. Translation O radalike, I am very degraded, holding a blade of grass between my teeth and falling at your lotus feet with all possible humility. I pray that you will kindly shower your grace upon this destitute soul and enliven me by bestowing the nectar of service under your direction and guidance. Those who are celebrated as kind and merciful do not reject even wicked people who accept their shelter and surrender unto them. This is their very nature. Therefore, please be kind to this wicked person who has surrendered unto you. Please do not deprive me of your causeless grace. I am longing so intensely for the loving service of the divine couple of Braj, under the shelter of your lotus feet. End of translation.
This is the typical bhav of Varna Dasha. In this stage, the Guru Rupa Saki gives the sadhak the order, Agyan, to engage in Astakalya Lila Smaranam by taking complete shelter of Krishna Nam while residing in Braj and assures him that his heartfelt, cherished longing will be fulfilled very soon. Vijay, please tell me about Smaranam Dasha. Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami has said, Krishnam Smaranam Janam Chasya, Preshtam Nija Samitam, Tat Tat Kata Ratas Chaso, Kuryad Vasam Vrajay Sada, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Eastern Division, 2, 294-296. to 296. Translation. The Sadak should constantly remember Sri Krishna along with his beloved eternal associates. He should absorb himself in chanting and hearing their glorious pastimes, and he should always reside in Braj. Seva Sadak Rupena, Siddha Rupena Chatrahi, Tadbhav Lipupsana Karya, Raja Lokanu Sarata. Translation. Those who have developed greed for Ragatmika Bhakti will render service following the residence of Braj internally by Siddha Rup and externally in their Sadaka Rup. Shravanot Kirtanad Anandini, Vaidi Bhaktiya Udatini Tu, Yani Angani Cha Tanya Atra, Vigyani Manisi B. Translation. Those who are well versed in transcendental knowledge, Tatvavit, know full well that all the various limbs of bhakti, such as shravanam and loud kirtanam, should also be practiced in raganuga bhakti. End of translation. Even before Vijay Kumar had heard the in-depth explanation of these three shlokas, he said, Kuryad Varsham Brajay Sada Goswami. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, it means that the sadhak should reside physically in Braja Mandal. In other words, in the pastime places of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna, the Lila Mandal. If he cannot stay in Braj physically, then he should do so mentally, because the result of residing in Braj mentally is the same as residing there physically. The sadhak should follow in the footsteps of the particular Saki whose loving bhavs, Premika Rag, has attracted him. He should reside in Braj with the Abhiman of being a Kunja Sevika, a maid attendant in the Kunja of that particular Saki. He should constantly remember Sri Krishna and the Bhav of that Saki. With this gross body, the Sadak should perform the Angas of Vaidhi Bhakti, such as Shravanam and Kirtanam. With his subtle body, he should constantly remember the Astakalya Lila and render his assigned seva as a Siddha Braja Gopi according to the eleven bhavs that he has attained. Outwardly, the sadhak must maintain his life following the prescribed rules and regulations, and internally he should cultivate the bhavs that nourish his spiritual form, Siddha Deha. One who follows this procedure correctly will naturally develop detachment from anything other than Braj. Vijay, please illustrate this seva more clearly. Goswami, the real meaning of Brajavas is to stay in a solitary place with Aprakat Bhav. The sadhak should render seva according to the Astakalya Lila while regularly chanting a fixed number of Harinam. He should regulate all the activities for bodily maintenance so that they do not become unfavorable to his bhajan. In other words, life should be molded in such a way that activities of bodily maintenance become favorable to one's bhajan. Vijay Kumar contemplated this deeply and said, Prabhu, I have understood this fully, but how can the mind be composed? Goswami, the mind automatically becomes composed as soon as one attains Raganuga Bhakti. This is because the hankering of the mind for worldly enjoyment automatically ceases when it is enlivened with the inherent loving attachment of the self and it runs towards Braja. 
In other words, the mind chases after mundane enjoyment only because of its affinity for it. But when this affinity is directed towards Braj, the mind becomes composed because of the absence of such attachment for worldliness. Still, if any apprehension of obstacles remains, it is beneficial to adopt the gradual, crumb, course that I have mentioned previously. Then, when the mind becomes fully composed, the distractions of worldliness cannot cause any harm. Vijay, what is the meaning of crumb, gradual cultivation? Goswami, one should maintain a fixed count of Hari Nam, and one should devoutly chant Shri Hari Nam for a fixed period every day in solitude, absorbed in his particular bhav, and keep his mind free from mundane thought. Slowly and gradually, one should increase the time for his sadhan, and eventually the stage will come when the mind will always be saturated with alokika chinmaya bhavs, so that no mundane thoughts can prevail over it. Vijay, for how long must one follow this practice? Goswami, one should continue to follow this practice until he has reached the state of mind that is beyond any disturbance. Vijay, how can one perform Nam Smarana with Bhav? Please elaborate on this point. Goswami, first you should chant Nam with Ulasa, a mood of rejoicing. Then combine that joy with possessiveness, mamata. After that, you should compound that mamata with vishramba, intimacy. When you do this, Shudabhav will gradually arise. Then, Bhavapana Dasha will appear. Initially, during the time of Smarna, the sadhak simply imposes bhav on his practice. However, in the stage of Bhavapana, Shuddha Bhav manifests in the heart, and this is called Prem. This indeed is the sequence for gradual development of Nishta within the heart of the Upasaka, transcendental servant. And this practice also includes the development of Nishta in the conception of the object of Upasa, the object of one's seva. Vijay, what is the sequence of Upasya Nishta? Goswami, if you want to attain the fully blossomed stage of Prem, then you should accept the following instructions of Sri Dasa Goswami in his Manashiksha, verse 3. Yadicha avasam braja bhuvi sa ragam prati janur yuva dvandvam takchit paricharitam arad abilase swarupam shri rupam saganam iha tasyagrajam api Spuritam premna nityam smara nama tada tvam srinu mana. Manashiksha, verse 3. O mind, if you cherish an ardent desire to live in Braj with Rag, and if you long to render direct loving savour life after life to Braj Yugal in their parakya affairs, which are free from any bondage to the rules of wedlock, then you must distinctly and constantly remember with love Sri Swarup Goswami and Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatan Goswamis along with their associates. You should accept them as your Guru Rupa Sakis and offer them pranam. End of translation. The idea is that if one performs sadhan in the bhav of Swakya, the result of Samanjasa Ras, in which the Seva bhav to the divine couple is inhibited and not in a fully blossomed state. Therefore, you should perform bhajan, maintaining the spiritual ego, abhiman, of pure parakya ras, according to the conceptions of Sri Swarup, Sri Rup, and Sri Sanatan. Even during the sadhan stage, when the bhavs are simply imposed, one should only adopt the pure parakya bhav. If the sadhak imposes the parakya bhavs, Parakya Rati will manifest, and Parakya Ras will eventually manifest from this Parakya Rati. This indeed is the Nitya Rasa of Braja Aprakat Lila. Vijay. 
What is the process of hearing Kram Shuddha in sequence in Astakalya Lila? Goswami, after explaining all the fascinating varieties of rasa in Astakalya Lila, Sri Rupa Goswami has said, Atalatvad apratvad apto so durvigataham spristai param tashtena rasabdi maduroyata. Ujvalalilamani Gona Sambhog Division 23 Krishna Lila is completely transcendental from all aspects. It is a sweet ocean of rasa. However, this ocean is unfathomable and has no shore. Krishna Lila is incomprehensible for the beings of this mundane world because it is extremely difficult for them to penetrate the mortal realm and have access to Shuddha Aprakat Tattva pure transcendental reality. The Aprakat Ras is so astonishing, variegated and all-pervading that it cannot be surpassed. Moreover, even if one who has been enlivened with Aprakat Bhav and who lives within that pure tattva explains the esoteric Krishna Leela, his description cannot be flawless or complete because description depends on words and words are incapable of fully expressing that transcendental reality. What to speak of such a person when Bhagavan himself describes Aprakat Ras, listeners and readers who are themselves overwhelmed by mundane faults and limitations perceive even his own description as faulty. Consequently, it is certainly very difficult to dive deep into the ocean of Rasa. However, when one is situated on the shore of this ocean in a neutral state, one can describe just a drop of it. Vijay. Then how is it possible to attain Aprakat Ras? Goswami. Madhurya Ras is unfathomable, matchless and difficult to understand. This is the very nature of Krishna Lila. However, our beloved Krishna is unlimitedly endowed with two special qualities, which are the real basis of our hopes. He is Sarva Shaktiman, possessed of all potencies, and Ichamayi, possessed of his own unimpeded and independent will. Therefore, by his sweet will, he can easily make his esoteric leelas manifest in this mundane world, although they are unlimited, unfathomable, and difficult to understand. This mundane realm is extremely insignificant and petty, but still, as the supreme autocrat, he desires to bring the topmost transcendental aspects of Krishna Lila to this world. It is only by his causeless mercy that his transcendental, eternal sweet Leelas, which are saturated with Ras, Aprakat Nitya Madhurya Rasamoy Lila, have manifested in this mundane world. How is it possible for Sri Mathura Dham, which is Aprakat, transcendental to this mundane world, to manifest in this world? How does it exist here? No argument can be applied in this matter because it is never possible for the limited intelligence of humans or devatas to understand the activities of Bhagavan's Achintya Shakti. Braja Lila in this world is the Prakat Bhav manifest experience of the topmost Krishna Lila, which is transcendental to this mundane world. We have realized and attained it, so there is no cause of anxiety for us. Vijay, if Prakat Lila and Aprakat Lila are both the same tattva, how is it possible for the one to be superior to another? Goswami, undoubtedly both are the same. The Leela that is manifest here indeed exists in its entirety in the transcendental realm. However, from the point of view of the conditioned souls in the initial stages of sadhan, it appears one way, and as they gradually advance, it appears in progressively elevated forms. In the stage of Bhavapan, realization of this Leela is completely pure. Vijay you are eligible to hear this subject, so I have no hesitation in speaking with you. 
one attains the stage of Bhavapana in his Smarana Dasha as a result of performing the appropriate sadhana for a long time. During the stage of Smarana, when one becomes completely free from all the polluted moods of his mundane experience, the stage of Apan, realization of one's sarup, appears. Shuddha Bhakti mercifully appears in the sadhak's heart according to the degree of appropriate practice in Smarna Dasha. Bhakti alone is Krishna Akashani, attractive to Krishna. So by Krishna's grace, all the dirt in the form of misconceptions is gradually removed by Smarna Dasha. It is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 14, 26. Yata yatatma parim rijayate so, mat punya gata shravana bidano, tata tata pashyanti vastu shukshmam, chakshu yatai vanjana sam prayuktam. Translation Just as anointing the eyes with salve gives them the power to see even subtle objects, similarly, when the jiva's heart is cleansed by the shravana and kirtanam, of my supremely purifying Lilakata, he gains the ability to realize extremely subtle tattva, namely the truth about my Swarup and my Lilas. End of translation. When the eyes are treated with ointment, they can see much more clearly. In just the same way, the jiva can realize the aprakat Swarup, transcendental nature, of the manifest Krishna Lila to the extent that he is purified by contact with the aprakat vastu, transcendental reality, through shravanam, kirtanam, and smaranam of Krishna Lila Kata. It is said in the Brahma Samhita 538, Premanjana charita bhakti vilochanena santa sadaiva ridayeshu vilokeyanti Yam Shyama Sundara Machintya Guna Swarupam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Vajami Translation I perform bhajan of the primeval Purush, Sri Govinda, who is Shyama Sundara Krishna. His form has inconceivable unique qualities, and his Shuddha Bhaktas perpetually see him in their hearts with the eye of devotion, anointed with the salve of love. End of translation. In the stage of Bhavapana, Swarup Siddhi, the faculty of transcendental vision appears, and at that time the sadhak can have darshan of his sakhi and also Yuteshwari, Srimati Radhika. Even after having darshan of Gokulanath Sri Krishna, the sadhak's realization is not steady at all times until he achieves the stage of Sampati Dasha. A vastu city, in which his gross and subtle bodies are destroyed. In Bhavapana Dasha, the pure jiva has full command over the inert, gross and subtle bodies. However, the secondary result of Sampati Dasha, the stage in which Krishna's mercy is fully manifested, is that the conviction of the jiva with this mundane world is completely cut off. Bhavapana Dasha is called Swarup Siddhi, and in Sampati Dasha one attains Vastu Siddhi. Vijay. How does one experience Krishna's Nam, Guna, Rupa, Lila, and Dharma at the time of Vastu Siddhi? Goswami. I cannot answer this question. I will only be able to see them and speak about them when I attain Vastu Siddhi. And you will only be able to understand and realize these things when you attain Sampati Dasha. At that time, there will be no further need to make you understand the various aspects of Krishna Lila. You will perceive it directly, so you will have no more need for further inquiry. Besides, it is useless for the Bhakta to express what he sees in his Swarup Siddhi, that is, in the Bhavapana Dasha, because none of his hearers will be able to realize what he is saying. Srila Rupa Goswami has described the symptoms of Swarup Siddhi Purushas as follows. From the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Eastern Wave, 
3.29 and 4.12. Translation. One may see some apparent imperfection or misconduct in the external behavior of bhaktas who have attained the stage of bhav. Even so, it is essential not to be envious of them by attributing faults to them, because they have become completely detached from everything other than Krishna, and therefore they are fully successful in every respect. This preme appears in the hearts of those who are very fortunate. Even those who are learned in Shastra find it very difficult to comprehend the activities and movements of those in whom the new sprout of preme has appeared. End of translation. Vijay, if that is so, why are there attempts in Sri Brahma Samhita and other such Shastras to give a description of Golok? Goswami, when great sadhus are situated in their Swarup city, and when Brahma and other devatas have been mercifully granted a vision of Sri Krishna's transcendental pastimes, they have tried to glorify such pastimes through their stavas and stutis according to their respective visions. However, such descriptions are only limited because this mundane realm has no proper words to express the apricot bhavs. Besides, bhaktas who are not sufficiently advanced cannot fully comprehend such descriptions. The bhaktas, however, have no need for all these descriptions. It is recommended that they should perform bhajan by taking support of the Prakat Leela that Sri Krishna has very kindly manifested in this world, and they will accomplish all perfection by this alone. Those who perform this bhajan in Gokul with Nishta will very soon receive a spurti of Golok in their hearts. All the Divya Leela of Gokul are also eternally existent in Golok, for in Tattva there is no distinction between them. Those with material vision perceive phenomena and activities in Gokul as mundane or illusory, but such perception ceases to exist at the time of Swarup City. One should continue to perform bhajan and be satisfied with whatever realization of the transcendental reality is bestowed upon him according to his adhikar. This is really Sri Krishna's instruction. If we sincerely adhere to his instruction, in due course of time, he will surely bestow on us his causeless mercy, through which we can have the full vision of his Divya Leela. Now Vijay Kumar became completely free from doubt in every respect. He fully awoke to his innate disposition and skillfully dovetailed all the Ekadash Bhavs in Krishna Leela. He seated himself in his Bhajan Kutya on the seashore became completely composed and spent his entire time relishing Prema Seva. During this time, Brajanath's mother left this world, and Brajanath left for his native place along with his grandmother. Sakya Prem had arisen in his unalloyed heart, and thus he resided in Navadweep Dham in the association of sincere Vaishnavas and performed his bhajan blissfully on the bank of Bhagavati Ganga. Vijay Kumar, however, gave up his householder's dress and accepted the Kopin and Bahiyavash of the renunciant. He maintained his life by Madhukari, begging Sri Mahaprasad, while remaining constantly absorbed in bhajan throughout all the eight parahas of the day and night. He only took a little rest during the time of Sri Radha Krishna's transcendental sleep. After they ate, he would honor Prasad, and when they were awake, he would render appropriate savor. His Hari Nam Mala was in his hands at all time. Sometimes he would dance, and sometimes he wept loudly. At other times, while gazing at the waves of the sea, he would laugh. Who but Vijay himself could understand the movements of his bhajan and the transcendental bhav of his heart? Outwardly, his name became Nimai Das Babaji. He never indulged in speaking or hearing worldly talk. He was the very embodiment of humility. His character was spotless, and his determination in bhajan 
was unwavering. If anybody offered him Mahaprasad or Kopin Bahyavash, he accepted only the very least that he needed, and not more. While he was chanting Hari Nam, tears constantly rolled down his cheeks. His throat became choked, and the hairs on his body stood erect. Within a short span of time, he attained perfection in his bhajan, and Sri Krishna most graciously bestowed upon him the adhikar to render seva in his aprakat lila. Like Brahma Haridas Thakur, his bhajan deha, the body with which he performed bhajan, was buried under the sands at the beach of Puri. Go, Premanandi, Hari Hari Bol, Bolo Bhagavan Sri Krishna Chandra Ki Jai. Thus ends the fortieth chapter of Jaiva Dharma, entitled Attaining Prem, the Supreme Wealth. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur now concludes his Jaiva Dharma. After striving many days and carrying upon his head the Kripa Shakti of Sri Guru Krishna and the Vaishnavas, this lowly Bhakti Vinod has composed Jaiva Dharma. According to the pure conceptions of Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, this book was fully complete on Magi Purnima, the full moon day of the month of Mag, in the year 410 of the Chaitanya era, 1896 at Surabi Kunj in Godrum Dvip, near the sacred river Janavi in Navadvip Mandal. Those who desire the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Gauranga, the purifier of the age of Kali, should read this book with faith. However, I take an oath that someone who has not developed even a trace of Shraddha for Sri Gauranga Dev should not read this book, for the dry Muktivads can never attain the shelter of Sri Krishna, but one endowed with spiritual shraddha will greatly realize the full esoteric aspects of Brajalila. This narration of Jaiva Dharma has been completed by Bhaktivedanta Tridandi Swami on the Ekadashi day of Satatila on January the 19th, 2012 in Sri Vrindavan Dham at Gopinath Bhavan within the Bhajan Kutia of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj.